All right, so I want to take you, uh, show you guys something here that has to do with um, the First Continental Congress. And actually, the Second Continental Congress, too, is going to be something we're going to talk about later on. But this is Independence Hall right here. Um, this is the location where the First Continental Congress uh, met and where they had their meetings at. It's a very rather small building. Right here is one room and here's the other one. It's not that big. Um, but it's where they met and where the... Um, meetings would take place for the First Continental Congress. Later on, it's going to be where the um, the uh, Declaration of Independence is going to be written and also the Constitution. So I'm going to show you some more pictures of it later on when we talk about it. But let me just show you the inside of it, though, real quick. Um, yep, there's the inside of it. Now this is the tour guide moving around that made the thing really blurry. But you can see this is where all the, the delegates would, would meet and discuss what was going on in the colonies. Um, Later on, this this chair right here is the the historic chair. It's where George Washington sat um, during one of the meetings. So it's uh, still there. It's a very famous piece. Um, but just a little insight as to where that first continental first continental Congress took place at. Sorry about the uh, the squirrel moment there, folks. I meant to show you that earlier in the in the screencast here, but nope. I figured better late than never, right? So let's go back to our slides here. All right, we talked about back in Boston. A little bit of a review right here. Let's go on to our next one. Uh, come on. All right, Lexington and Concord. Now, in response to the First Continental Congress actually existing, um, the word of it got back to King George, and between this Congress being declared, this this meeting of all the different um, colonies without his consent, without his permission, and you know the events in Boston. The King George went and declared that the colonies of New England were in a state of rebellion, meaning that they had turned away from the king and they needed to be brought back under his authority. In April 1775, he sent General Thomas Gage with 700 troops with o and gave him orders to go to Concord, Massachusetts to destroy a colonial weapons cache there, a place where they had been storing a lot of the um, weapons. Now, Concord, Massachusetts is about 20 miles north of Boston, a uh, pretty sizable distance back then to walk um, in a day. Uh, it would take the troops several hours to do that. While the troops were leaving Boston and moving out, you had um, several riders, one of them being a man named Paul Revere, I'm sure you've all heard of. Um, he was sent out you know, along with others to alert the local townspeople uh, that the British were coming. The British were coming. And along the way, pe uh, militia called Minutemen were gathering to oppose the British troops that were coming along. They kind of felt that this was it. The British had finally started to take over and they were going to use force against them. Um, you may have guessed that the Minutemen um, were called Minutemen because they could be ready in less than a minute. That was kind of their, their slogan, that they would keep their arms and their, their muskets and uh, all their tools that they would need for fighting um, within reach, that they could be prepared to go in a minute's notice if uh, something was happening. The first groups of Minutemen were able to meet the British in a place called Lexington, Massachusetts, which is just south of Concord. Uh, the Minutemen lined up and faced off against the British soldiers. Now, it's not known who fired the first shot. Um, no, that information has been lost to history. But someone did fire a shot. And at the end, both sides started firing on each other. And the Minutemen were defeated. And the British moved on to Concord. But news of this defeat uh, reached um, more and more people. And so more militia began to gather at Concord, Massachusetts. And even before the British got there, the colonists were able to remove many of the weapons that they had stored there. So by the time the British got there, there was only a few cannons, muskets, and some gunpowder left. The majority of it had been hidden and saved um, for the militias. So their whole trip there was kind of meaningless at that point. But now they're facing a very big problem. How are they going to get back to Boston safely?